How's it going everyone? Cody Bernardi here with another YouTube video and in today's video we are going to be talking about passwords, specifically what makes a great password. Now for those that are new to the channel, like I said my name is Cody Bernardi. I am a senior cybersecurity engineer and I also have my own cybersecurity consulting company Blackburn Security. So I'm not gonna get too much into that. Let's just get into what makes a good password. So number one is you want a really long password. And when I mean really long, I mean the longest you can possibly make it. Contrary to belief, special characters, different ways you can make a letter with a number, it doesn't really matter. Hackers are able to figure that stuff out because, well, those things are on the keyboard. And also, hackers aren't the ones going in typing these things in. Most of the time, it's through things called botnets where you're having credential stuffing attacks, which I could get into that specific stuff later. But the key thing to remember is long passwords. A good tip is to take a couple things that are easy to remember, like song verses, and kind of mash them together. So take favorite song, second favorite song, and third favorite song, maybe put the choruses of that together, and you have a really long password. That's all that matters. Number two is you want unique passwords on each website. The reason why this matters is because if you get an email and password breached, uh, what hackers will do is they will actually take that username and password combo and try it on different websites. And you don't want that to happen. That's called credential stuffing, and it's pretty prominent nowadays. So you want to have a unique password on each website. Number three is a password manager. Again, this is contrary to belief in the security community. It is good to have anything from a cloud-based solution that I use, or it could be as simple as a book where you write down all your passwords in. Yes, I know, ooh, goes against the grain, I guess, but it's, it, it's good to have all that stuff in a secured location. So if you're going to be using a book, make sure that's something at home and not in a public space. Make sure you put that in a safe spot uh, and you can write your really long password in there. And number four, I highly recommend this, but I understand that there are some limitations, is to have two-factor authentication. You might have heard that been used a few times as 2FA or MFA. Basically what that does is you have to know a password and then have something as a second factor. So meaning you put in your email address, you put in your super long password, and then you either have to be something or have something. So whether that's a face ID, a thumbprint, or something like a text message, or something like a little Yubi key, which most people probably won't have. So definitely go through all of your accounts, especially the ones that mean the most to you, such as bank accounts, Facebook, Twitter, whatever it may be, see if they have two-factor authentication available, and then sign up for it. So anyways, that is it for this video. Um, it's pretty short, so I'm probably not gonna get any ad revenue for it, so I'll put some links down below. Um, I talk about a privacy app in one of my videos. If you use the code down below, it'll definitely help me out. Um, and then recommendations for password managers. I'm not an affiliate with those companies, so uh, these are just my personal choices. So. Definitely check those out down below. I won't get a kickback from that, but that privacy link, I will get a kickback on. So anyways, y'all take care. Goodbye.